We've looked at solving exponential equations using logarithms, and now we're going to be solving logarithmic equations. And the first type of equation we're going to look at is where there's a logarithm on one side of the equal sign. And we're going to use properties of logarithms to do this. So a logarithmic equation is an equation with a logarithmic expression that contains a variable. So you're going to see log, right? That's a logarithmic equation. And I want to point out that if log base b of x equals log base b of y, so if the bases are the same, you can cancel those out and you can just write x equals y. So the first type we're going to look at today, logarithm on one side of the equal sign. The steps to solve are the very first thing you're going to do if you need to is condense one side to a single logarithm using the properties of logs. Then we'll convert this to exponential form. We'll rewrite this if possible. And then we're going to solve. It's very important that you check for extraneous solutions. And what are those? Those are solutions that are not valid. So how do we check for those? You just need to remember that answers may, may not create the log of a negative number, OK? Meaning, it doesn't matter, for example, if I have a base of 4, it doesn't matter what I raise that base of 4 to, this over here cannot be a negative number, OK? That is not valid, all right? There's no exponent that will yield a negative value, OK? So let's move on to our examples. In our example, the very first example, if I follow my steps, I don't need to condense anything to a single logarithm. I only have one log. So I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form. And I'll just remind you, I kind of do that counterclockwise motion. 4 to the power of 3 equals x minus 1. So I'm going to write it like that. 4 to the power of 3 equals x minus 1. What is 4 to the power of 3? That's 64. And now we're just solving this basic equation. How do I get the value of x? Add 1 to both sides, so I get 65 equals x. Is it a valid solution? I'll plug in 65 for x. Log base 4 of 65 minus 1, that's 64, which is a positive value. Therefore, my answer is valid. Let's move on to number 2. I'm going to rewrite this the same way. I don't need to condense it. So it's 2 to the power of negative 2 equals x over 8. And then what is 2 to the power of negative 2? That's 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4 equals x divided by 8. How do I get x all by itself? Multiply both sides by 8. When I do that, I get 8 over 4 equals x. And can I simplify that? I sure can to 2. x equals 2. All right, and if I plug in 2 for x, 2 over 8 is just 1 fourth. That's a positive value, so that works. Okay, looking at number 3. So 3 and 4 are our first examples where we do have to condense the logarithms to a single log. So if I have log of x plus log of 4, same base, that base would be 10. When I'm adding, that means when I condense them, I can multiply, right? 4 times x equals 3. And remember that if there's no base written, that's an assumed base of 10. So when I rewrite this in exponential form, it's going to be 10 to the power of 3 equals 4 times x. What is 10 to the power of 3? That's 1,000. And then how do I get x all by itself? I divide both sides by 4, and I get 250 equals x. And there's my answer. Let's look at number 4. This is the last problem for today. And I'm actually going to zoom in so I can do a lot for this one. So it says log base 6 of x plus log base 6 of x plus 5 equals 2. Again, I have the same base. So I can condense these. 
to log base 6 of x times x plus 5. So now I've condensed it to a single logarithm, and I'm actually going to simplify that x times x plus 5. I'm going to do that by distributing that x into each term. So I get x squared plus 5x equals 2. Now I've condensed it to a single logarithm so I can rewrite it. So I'm going to write those little notes over here. The first thing we did was condense it, and now we're going to rewrite it. So how do I rewrite it? 6 to the power of 2 equals x squared plus 5x. Let's just continue to simplify. What can I simplify at this point? What is 6 squared? That's 36 equals x squared plus 5x. Okay, so obviously I have a type of quadratic here, right? Because the highest exponent is a 2, so it's a quadratic. So what do we do when we solve quadratics? We move everything to one side, set it equal to 0, factor it, and find our solution there if we can factor it. Most everything, even when you get to like AP calculus, is factorable. If it's not, there are obviously other methods. So I'm going to subtract 36, set it equal to 0, so I get x squared plus 5x minus 36. Okay, so what did we do there? Or what are we going to do now? We're going to factor it. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 36 that add to 5. What are those numbers? Positive 9 and negative 4. So x plus 9 times x minus 4. Okay, so what do I do when I am solving this quadratic? I'm going to use the zero product property and set my factors equal to zero, and I'm going to solve. So when I do that, I get x equals negative 9 and positive 4. Okay, and here's where we're going to be checking for our extraneous solution. So remember, your answer cannot create the log of a negative number. So I'm going to plug these into our logarithms at the top. So the first one I'm going to look at is negative 9. Log base 6 of negative 9. Well, that's not going to work because we create your answer cannot create the log of a negative number, and negative 9 does. So now let's look at 4. Log base 6 of 4. That works. Log base 6 of 4 plus 5 is log base 6 of 9, which works. So your final answer for this problem, after we've checked for our extraneous solutions, our final answer is x equals 4. And that's it. And that concludes your notes over day one, solving logarithmic equations where there's a logarithm on only one side of the equation. I hope it was helpful.